the confusion of wartime London, small units of British intelligence scattered throughout the city were quietly at work. One such unit of men and women were headquartered in St. Marlebone Street. play much anymore. Just saw the piano here and, well, there was no one about. I love that one. It's Chopin, isn't it? The scherzo in B minor? B flat minor. It is a scherzo in B minor. It's a very justifiable mistake. I don't believe we've met. No, we haven't. Douglas Elliott. <coughs> Lily Martin. Yes, I know who you are. Really? How? Well, if you must know, I asked. Now that we're on intimate terms, I think it only fair to tell you that you're very unpopular here with the military. What am I accused of? Being unfair to organized bachelors who feel the necessity of your company at dinner. Now, you think that over and you'll see that we have got a point. I'll give it some serious consideration. <laughs> Bye. those reports, Sir Tom. No, thank you. Lily, we've just thought up a very pretty trick. Oh? Yes, it's a particularly mean and nasty trick. So naturally, we thought it needed the woman's touch. Now, see here, I've been putting the woman's touch on your nasty masculine tricks ever since I came here. D-Day appears to be not more than a couple of months off, so we're planning a perfect whirlwind of deceptions for the enemy. Things like the Montgomery. Oh, what's that? We have an actor who's going to be dressed up just like Montgomery. We're sending him up to Gibraltar. Certainly the Nazis won't believe that an invasion of France is imminent with the British commander-in-chief in Gibraltar. Harry, you men are earning my respect. Where do I come in? We've got another deception. We've chosen five men who we think have the right aptitude for the job we have in mind. We combed a long list of volunteers to get it down to those men. What's this deception to be? Well, very soon the man chosen will be dropped by parachute into France. He'll have vital information about Allied airborne troops who are to attack and seize an airfield. A part of our prelude to the invasion. Mm. Go on. Well, uh, the fly in the ointment, as far as our chosen man is concerned, is that the Nazis will catch him before he makes contact with the French underground. They'll give him the treatment with all their little refinements. He'll talk, spill everything he knows, and when he does, the Nazis will divert a sizable force to the defense of the airfield. But the information they get out of our man will be false. Exactly. But what's my function? You are to choose the man who is to jump. He'll be one of the five men on this list. Hmm. Well, perhaps he should be an actor like the Montgomery deception. No, no. No, this man has to be genuine. A patriot who, who completely believes that the information he has is vital. So that when he breaks, it will be absolutely convincing. And then afterwards, his remorse and the guilt over what he's done. Oh, no. No actor could possibly carry it off. Well, I still can't understand why you want me to make this choice. Well, we've taken this as far as we can go as men. All five are equally suitable in our minds. We want a woman's opinion. I see. You're uniquely right for it. You see, a woman... Well, now, look. If you have dinner with a fellow or see him here and there in the right surroundings, I think you'll get an intuition about him.
we need special attributes in this candidate. Do or die. Anything for England or the girl I love, you know. But he must be a physical coward who cannot endure punishment. That's very good, Harry. The whole plan's wasted if he doesn't crack under pressure. We need a sort of daredevil weakling. A coward, a, a weakling. And I have to choose the weakest man on this list. Well, let us say the most sensitive. We leave it to your judgment. Ralph Evans, Derek Lestrange, Douglas Elliott, Philip Nash, and John Foreman. One of these men will turn traitor to England and never know he's being a patriot. That's it, my dear. I thought I was unshockable, but I'm not. The men are waiting to be interviewed out there. Yes, sir. So that is my story. I, I won't say any more because I am quite sure that I am the man you'll pick. We'll see, Evans. Thank you. Thank you and good day, Miss Martin. Good day. Shall I send the next man in? If you please. So this is the kingdom of the lovely princess. And it's not a palace at all, it's just a small back room. A small back room in Marylebone, where lives the lady all alone. I did but see her passing by, yet I will love her till I die. That last bit's not original, of course. Sit down, please. Thank you. Oh, smoke if you like. Thank you very much. I'll take my light-hearted mask off now and tell you that I volunteered for anything that would get me out of this nice, safe, dull rut that I've been in. I missed the North African campaign and the Italian one. I'm just a chairwoman, Commander. Have you any idea what this mission is? No, not the foggiest. All I know is that it's got a sweet-sounding word to it. Dangerous. I appreciate your frankness, Lieutenant. I could use a little, especially at the end of a day such as this one's been. All you wonderful men, bless you. Coming in here, trying to get yourselves killed and acting as though it were no trouble at all. Why don't you simply say, look, I'm scared stiff, but somebody's got to do this job, and my aunt in Australia can use the bench. <laughs> now, now you're going too far. You're taking the romance out of martyrdom. Why, life wouldn't be worth dying for at all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madame, dinner is served. Here's to us. Me particularly, as I was clever enough to get you to have dinner with me. Oh, no, if you think back, you'll remember it was I who tricked you into the invitation. Oh, was it really? Mm. Here's to you, then. <laughs> My liquor's a curse. Oh, gives you fits. <laughs> this is a flavorful dish. Oh, fascinating. Every place you eat these days, it's all the same. There's no food in the field. What were we talking about when I lost your undivided attention? Your recital at Wigmore Hall. Ah, yes, my auspicious London debut. Mm -hmm. And was it auspicious? I thought so, but then there's no accounting for tastes. And the critics didn't like you. I confused them. They didn't like that. What I did was to play a completely unhackneyed program. No Bach, Beethoven, or Brahms. Mm. I dug up neglected things. The sonata by Paul Dukash, pieces by Galuppi, Roussel, and Sterndale Bennett. Mm, I never heard of any of them. There you are, see? They said I had style and technical skill. But until I condescended to play at least something from the standard repertoire, judgment as to the extent of my interpretative powers must be withheld. However, they said building a program like that was a valiant thing to do. And that's what you wanted, wasn't it? I beg your pardon? Well, it seems to me that 
You thought you'd get credit for doing a brave thing. And yet at the same time, you took no chances at all of getting hurt. You see, you drew the critics' teeth in advance. So they had no way to get at you by their usual standards. So you're a deep one, aren't you? Do you suppose there's anything to that? Oh, no, I shouldn't let it bother me if I were you. Buzz bombs. Those devils fight clean. Fight clean? War is filth. Let's accept that fact. Let's win by any means we can devise. Bomb hospitals, poison drinking wells. Use anything that'll end it quickly. Germans are realistic. Why can't we follow their example? I'm sorry, Doug. On my soapbox. I wonder if the millennium will ever come. Millennium? when women will perhaps be allowed to be natural. Our mothers had to play it being afraid. We had to play it being courageous. How do you think I feel? We, we can't think in these ordinary terms in our job. I know how hard it is. I'm not going to talk any more about it. Just let's get this thing done and we move on to something else. You've gone this far, you've had time with these men. Which man is it? Well, I, I'm not quite certain yet, Sir Thomas. You'll have to give me a little longer. Perhaps just a day or so. Wonderful for me, Lily. I can't tell you how wonderful. I find myself being so much nearer to someone I like when I'm with you. I feel I can be simple and truthful and not have to pretend to possess powers that are really beyond me. Can you possibly understand what I'm trying to say? You see, I've always been afraid. Afraid of being rejected, of making decisions of being the sort of man who finds it difficult to make friends with other men. And lacking the technique of making easy conquests with women. A week ago, I wouldn't have had the courage to say this to you. I'd have whispered to you if you were asleep and then tiptoed away. All bravado, no bravery. But no more of that. Lily, if I go on this, it can't last forever. And if I come back safe, will you have dinner with me my first night home? I'm giving you fair warning. I'm going to ask you to marry me. It's 
up. What did you say? Oh, no, my... Well, it... Yeah. Hmm. Well, if... Well, send the report into headquarters. Yes. Right. Bye. Well, who? Which man is it? It's Douglas Elliot. From the coding room, it's one you were asking for. F-12, Aris France. F-12? That's the double agent of Elliot. Read it out, ma'am. Yes. F-12 through 74B transmitted. Oh, never mind that. Yes. At uh, 17 hours 40, spotted plane deploying over drop-off area, Clersey Forest. German arresting officers had been informed as per plan and made capture of messenger and myself. The messenger was interrogated immediately upon the arrival of the SS. When he refused to talk, physical means were employed to coerce him into disclosing information. Frankly, we know that nobody arrives in France these days from England just for a visit. We also know that uh, big plans are afoot concerning movements of Allied forces. And we are quite sure that you are bearing information which it would be valuable for us to know. Perhaps extremely valuable. I'm a prisoner of war. I've told you all I can. You don't wish to talk to us about the information. We really need to know it. No. We've been doing a little investigating. We are told that you're a concert pianist. Isn't that wonderful? How I envy you. I myself am extremely fond of piano music. Would you be kind and find it in your heart to play for us some evening? I don't think so. Oh, I would love it so. Tell me, what do you think? Uh, what is your opinion of von Weber's Konzertstück for piano with orchestra? Trivial and bombastic. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. It's one of my greatest favorites. Yours, of course, is the professional opinion. I bow to it. Just once more, I really have to ask. You decline to discuss the information which... Yes. Uh, Miss Martin. Cheers to victory. Here, here, here. I think the Maribyrn section of British intelligence can well be proud of its contribution. And I personally want to thank all of you for a job well done. Oh, thank thanks you very much. Sir. So listen to this. With this signature, said General Jodel in a soft-spoken voice, as he signed the full surrender, the German people and armed forces are, for better or for worse, delivered into the hands of the victor. In this war, which has lasted over five years, both have achieved and suffered more, perhaps, than any other people in the world. Well, that's an extraordinary statement, achieved and suffered. Well, what's all this about? The long face. We won, you know. Do you find that depressing? <laughs> of course not. Now, I know how it is, Lily. When one comes to the end of, well, there are memories one manages to drown in an ocean of work. And when that work stops, well, there they are again, come to the surface. You're thinking of your husband, hmm? No. No, Sir Thomas. Not of him. I accepted his loss quite some time ago. Before I left Canada, in fact. Dunkirk was five years ago, you know. Now, I wasn't thinking of Paul. Not just today, I mean. Oh. Frankly, I was thinking of... Elliot. How did you know? Well, just a good guess. I was sure that you and Doug Elliot had something, well, something more than an official relationship. Well, I hadn't thought anyone... Oh, dear. 
Why is it people on my own staff are always astounded that I know anything, that I have any powers of observation? I'm in the British intelligence. I just might be intelligent, you know, besides being British. Now, what about Elliot? Mm, that was hard on him, wasn't it? I think his story should come out now. Oh, do you? Well, yes, the people of this country certainly ought to know what he did for them. I'm afraid that's out of the question, Lily. We could never permit that information to be released. You can see the point, I think. It was a good trick, a very good trick. And that is the most cold-blooded thing I've ever heard. Well, I, I have a cold-blooded job. I was chosen for it because there's something distinctly fishy about me. Now, I don't think it's important to you that the public know that you... But that but... Doug Elliott know. At least he should know the truth now. Oh. But who's going to tell him? Will you? What will it do to him to find out? I dare say it's the kind of thing that ruins a man's life. His life is pretty well ruined right now, wouldn't you say? Yes, probably. Do you know where he is? No. I have a feeling he isn't in England. I think if he were, somehow I'd have known. Lily, this is none of my business. But then hardly any questions I ask her. Are. Were you in love with him? Yes. Are you now? You can't predict people ever completely. But I should say he's going to hate whoever tells him. And he'll consider your part in the affair as unforgivable. I mean it. Hello. Yes, this is Lily Martin. I'm Mrs. Almost. You do remember me, don't you? Have you heard from Mr. Elliot? Uh, well, not exactly from him, uh, but I have a little bit of information. You remember I promised I'd tell you if I found out anything when you were here looking for him. Oh, yes, of course. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I'll come right over. Yes. It's just awful what war does to friendships when it's all over. Or is it the peace that does it? You and Mr. Elliot were such good friends, weren't you? I remember I used to stand in the lower hall of an evening when you were there, listening to his playing the piano for you. The piano? It's gone. Where is it? That's what my little bit of information was about. Seeing as how the piano belonged to Mr. Elliot, the rest of the furniture's mine, you know. Yes, it was a genuine French piano. Came from Paris. Yes, I know, but what happened to it? Well, uh, I was instructed to send it off. Send it off? To whom? To the governor in the West Indies. Yes, the cottage people rang me up. They had papers showing the sale of said piano. Yes, I know. Where in the West Indies? His Majesty's Island of St. Elspeth, B.W.I. Where is Government House? Government House? Oh, you can't miss it. From the hotel, you walk just three squares to the left till you see the Union Jack flying in the breeze. That is if there is a breeze. Thank you. Thank you. join you in a moment. Please make yourself comfortable, ma'am. Thank you.
some humor cleverly. Had a nice note about you from my old friend, Sir Thomas. How do you do? How do you do, sir? He told me you'd be turning up here one of these days, and I must say I'm delighted to be able to welcome a visitor from home. Everybody gets to Jamaica or one of the other large islands, but we're the neglected orphans of the Seven Seas. <laughs> You're admiring my piano. Do you play? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. Oh, pity. My wife does, uh, a little. <laughs> Uh, they tell me this is a very fine instrument. It's made by Pleil of Paris. I haven't heard of them myself. Oh, they're a very fine piano. Chopin always used them in his concerts. Oh, is that so? Yes. They're rather rare and quite expensive. Hmm? Well, then it was an even better bargain than I thought. Then you got it from a, a private party? In the most peculiar way. I bought it right here on the island, you know. Not really. Yes, there was an advertisement in the local gazette advertising a piano for sale. So I sent my secretary down to see the fellow. Well, it turned out that his piano had to be sent here from England. But it arrived just in time for my wife's birthday. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Uh, Elliot got his 150 pounds, and I got this little beauty. Mm. Um, is he still on the island? Who, Elliot? Yes, I'm afraid he is, poor devil. What do you mean by that? Well, he's sort of... Uh, Beach coma, if you know what I mean. Ah, tea. Won't you sit down, my dear? Oh, yes, thank you. <laughs> oh, has Mr. Elliot, oh, that is, since you've had the piano, has he ever come over to play? Refused. Hm. We asked him very nicely. Of course, that was before we realized how badly off he was, uh, morally speaking, that is. Hard to make friends with a man who's so demoralized. Well, has he money or a job or, or what? Doesn't do anything so far as I know. Wouldn't be surprised if he's still eating. Uh, drinking would be more like it, I'm afraid. Off his piano money down at that bar. What bar? All the pars on Queen Victoria Street. I'm afraid he's not the sort of citizen to whom England can point with pride. Perhaps he has good reason for the way he... he behaves. You sound as though you know him. I do. Oh. Uh, you, uh, you realize, of course, that uh, what I've been saying is largely hearsay. Uh, do, uh, do you intend to see him while you're here? Yes, I, I'm hoping to. You see, we met during the war. He was in the army. Oh, an army man. Oh, well, of course, in those circumstances, it... Uh, it uh, yes, I... I think I'll invite him over here. Uh, you must come, too, uh, for dinner. You might be able to persuade him to play the piano for us. Nothing like a return to former hobbies for restoring a man's morale, is there? Hello, Doug. Why? What do you know? Miss Lily Martin. Pride of British intelligence. Maryland, essentially. Intelligence is still operating, I see. Oh, Doug, please, let's get out of here. What is it this time? A little mission, perhaps, in the Caribbean for Sir Thomas and his gallant band of unsung heroes? <laughs> Who are we at war with, Fred? Doug, please. Why have you come to me? I thought I'd done my little bit to help in the war. Isn't my record in the files? 
Stop it, Doc. Why did you come here? Why'd you have to seek me out? Why can't you leave me alone? The island is simply overrun with all kinds of the most gorgeous flowers. A perfect riot of color. It really is. I'm writing a little book about them to send back to all our many dear friends in England. Uh, now, these are called... Uh, oh, dear, it's so frightfully difficult to remember all their names. Hugh, dear, what is the name of these flowers? Anthuriums, my dear. Oh, yes, of course. Oh, what is the time, please? Later than I hoped. I really did think he'd show up for dinner. Are you sure he got the invitation? Oh, quite sure. He may still come, you know. Our guests are going to be disappointed if he doesn't. They wanted to hear him play. Eleanor, my dear, why don't you play something for them? Oh, you. I only play to amuse myself. Eleanor's going to play the piano for us. Oh. Uh, well, if you all think that you can endure it. Oh, please do. Uh, you're all very kind. I'm very You invited me, I believe, sir. Well, I'm here. And of course, you expected me to play the piano, didn't you? Did you expect me to play with this? So, if you'll excuse me, sir, I... I don't think I'll stay. Find him in there, Mom. Thank you, Jim. Where to, Jacob? Why don't you go away? You can't just go on ignoring the fact that I'm here, Doug. Why, this is like a storybook. A house by the sea on a tropical isle. Did Sir Thomas send you here? No, he didn't. How did you know where to find me? Well, your landlady told me where the piano had been shipped, so I followed it. Why? Well, you stood me up, you know. You did promise that if you got back safely, you'd dine with me your first night home. Oh, a wartime promise. No one expects anyone to keep that kind of promise. Well, I must be stupid that way, Doug, because I did expect it to be kept. I wanted both of us to keep it. Rather expensive for you, isn't it, coming down here for a date? Anyway, I broke it, and I wanted to stay broken. Now that that's over, I'll take you back to your hotel. Doug, I am not going yet. You're not being very kind if you don't. I'd begun to write you a letter before I came tonight. Now that I'm here, I realize that would have been cowardly. And you do know what is and what is not cowardly, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, then, of course, you know all about me. And you are not a coward. Don't be polite, Lily. It doesn't convince anybody. You were very brave. Yes, of course. Strode into that little back room in St. Marylebone like a lion, roaring with courage and brave speeches. 
but there was a little back room in occupied France where the noble lion squealed like a rat. And rats don't like company when they're at bay in their holes. It's no use trying to smoke them out. They'd rather die where they are. Oh, Doug. Oh, go away, Lily. Go away. I can't bear you to look at me. I can't bear it. Well, Doug, don't I... pity me, Lily. I have a very deep respect for you. <laughs> Find a lot of respect you'd have had for me if you'd seen the way I cracked when the Nazis started to put on the pressure. That would have changed nothing for me. Neither my respect, nor, nor my love. You can't mean that. Yet when I was in that prison camp, I wanted nothing else but for you to keep on loving me. I wanted you to understand me. I used to dream. And in the dreams, you didn't despise me. When I tried to speak to you of, of all those men who must have died because of what I'd done, you kissed me on the mouth. volunteer for that mission. You volunteered because that's the way you are. Oh, it's old bluff. Trying to be something I'm not. We all do things like that in our own peculiar way. You told me of my peculiar way once, didn't you? When we talked of my piano playing. You said I was getting credit for doing a brave thing by playing neglected works. At the same time, avoiding taking any chances of getting hurt. Finally, it caught up with me. I did get hurt. It caught up with me, all right. The Nazis called my bluff. And don't, don't go listen. back to England, Lily. You're the sort of woman who wants to marry the blind, crippled soldier home from the war. You want to do the right thing, but I'm not the disabled hero you're looking for. I'm a traitor. I'm a yellow dog. Everybody knows that. There are only five people in the whole wide world who know what you did. And you are not one of them. Oh, what sort of mad toast that? Anyway, it's too late. Oh, dearest, can't you guess what you did? Can't you see what the truth is? I know the truth. I've lived the truth. No, you don't know the truth. You've got to believe me. What you told the Nazis forced them to hold troops in readiness for an attack that never took place. What? But at least not where they thought it would. Our troops landed in another area and, and safely, thanks to you. I don't understand. What about all that information? That was false. False? Did you know it was false? Yes. Please try to understand why I... There's nothing very deep to understand. All very simple, really. Particularly the reason why you chose me for the job. It wasn't simple. All that gay and innocent question, and the sincere way you had of getting me to confide in you, just for one reason. So that you could find out if I was the man you were looking for. Isn't that the reason? No. It was only partly that, Doug, and that's the part I couldn't help. You must believe me, Doug. Most of the time I wanted to know about you for myself. For myself, Doug, because I loved you. I swear it. Doug, you're hurting me. Go away, Lily. I can't. I can't go away, Doug. You, you've got to understand. I had to choose the right man. I had to choose you. Why couldn't I have been told? Why couldn't I have known what I was doing so that I could have been proud of it? Because the Germans would never have believed you unless you were fanatically sincere and... And a coward. No. Not a coward to me. All I ever learned about you, 
only made me love you the more. Love me, Doug. Don't send me away. Don't. aren't you? You hate yourself for what you did, but you hate me even more for knowing it. I don't call it cowardice because you couldn't endure what nature didn't make your body able to endure, but you can't see that. No, you've, you've got to destroy both our lives by your hatred. When you were in that prison camp, dreaming. What do you think I was doing? I was dreaming too, praying that you would understand that what I did wasn't being done to you, the man, but to the soldier. I couldn't prevent what happened to you. That's really why you came down here, isn't it? A sentimental journey for your conscience. Your conscience. And I almost believed it was because you loved me. I do. Do you mix your conscience and my cowardice and call it love? Well, call it anything you like. So it isn't perfect. That shouldn't matter. Not to either of us. Doesn't it matter if it shows our weakness to each other? Well, at least we aren't lying. Then where do you find the perfect love without any guilt or shame or weakness in it? Where? I thought I had it once. This is all that's left to remind us of, of the soldier who tried to be perfect. Couldn't the man settle for something a little less? <laughs> 